Life is a miracle. Two cells, a sperm cell and an ovum are enough to make it happen. They're enough to form hands and feet, a heart and lungs for the fetus. From a single cell, you get a full animal body. And this is like, um, like, like almost like a miracle. When we're grown up, we have about 200 different types of cells in our body. All of them carry the same DNA in their core. This genome tells every cell what to do. So how can they look so different and do so many different jobs? To shed light on this, scientists from all over Europe came together. They create the 4D Cellfate project. Twelve different institutes from eight countries join forces to understand how cells develop. In Cambridge, they try to look inside our cells to find answers. Even today, this is very difficult. We know that there are DNA and some other molecules inside the cell's core, but what all of them do is hard to tell. Or at least it was, until Ernest Lauer and his team worked on a method to make the invisible visible. It took years of work to get there. But the story had a happy ending. What you see here are single molecules floating around in a cell. So for the first time, the group could actually see what is really going on in the cell. Our genome is surrounded by a lot of proteins, and these proteins modify the structure of the DNA. It was initially surprising that genome structure would be so different in every cell. We sort of had the idea initially when we started out that it might be fundamentally similar in most cells. And, and of course what we learnt is that that's not the case, it's actually totally different in every cell. These differences are the key to understanding how different cell types develop. They all carry the same DNA in their core, but the proteins modify how it's used. There are two big groups of such proteins, NERD and polycomb. Among the latter is a protein called MEL18. To understand what it does, Luciano Di Croce's team in Barcelona grows mouse cells in a Petri dish but they modify them in a way that MEL18 is missing in some cells. Under the microscope, they can see how the cells evolve with MEL18. They turn into cardiomyocytes, heart muscle cells. They beat like in a pumping heart. Next is the dish in which MEL18 is missing. The cells are silent. They could have turned into heart muscle cells, but they didn't. You can see here that they, they don't beat anymore, so which suggests that polygon is an important player in order to get proper ESL differentiation into cardiomyocyte. MEL18 connects to the DNA and thereby changes how it is used. This gives rise to the development of heart muscle cells. A big step ahead on the way to understanding how decisions on the fate of cells are made, and maybe even to turn this fate around one day. We can actually reset the clock, which means we can take a differentiated cells, a cell, for example, which is capable of beating, and we can set it back to a pluripotent stem cell. So once you can reprogram the cells back in time, they can now be again capable, it's a pluripotent cell, capable of going in the direction you want, you can actually use this trick for curing a lot of potential human disease. Of course, this is still some way in the future. 
but the scientists of the 4D Sulfate Project will continue to look for answers to understand how the miracle of our lives works.